Tanisha Scott. If Tyrone calls me Caramel Cutie one more time, I'll scream. I turn to cut my eyes at him and find Judy Ann staring at me again. Even after I turn away, I can feel her eyes stroking the back of my head. I'm so sick of people making a big deal over my good hair. I caught her pawing my hair just last week. I reached back and grabbed a finger before she had a chance to pull away. I spun around, more aggravated than angry, and said, Look, it's just hair. It's not magic, so don't go rubbing it for good luck. Trust me, it hasn't brought me any. Reynard stifled a laugh. You never know when that boy is paying attention. Of course, Judy Ann made out like she didn't know what I was talking about, swearing up and down she hadn't touched a single head, hair on my head. But I'd seen that hungry look in her eyes, like I had something she wanted. It was the same look my cousin Faith always gives me just before she says, I sure wish I had good hair like yours, or I wish I was light like you, followed by them boys would like me better, which isn't true if you ask me. But try telling that to my cousin, or to Judy Ann. If she doesn't quit bugging me, I'm going to ask Mr. Ward to change my seat. She's why I chopped all my hair off last year. Well, people like her. My mother freaked when she saw me. My bangs were cut straight across my brow, and the sides were sort of squared at the neck. I looked like a clown minus the red nose. It was the best I could do on my own, and it looked better than that time I washed it in detergent to keep it up so I could have an afro like my cousin's. Anyway, Mom hated it so much, she finally forked over the money for a visit to a hair salon to have it cut professionally. Served her right. I'd begged her to let me cut it off before. But your hair is so beautiful, she'd say. Why would you want to cut it? My mind flashed to the school cafeteria that afternoon. I'd walked past a group of would-be girlfriends who sucked their teeth at me and said my name like it was curdled milk they couldn't wait to spit out. Here comes Miss High Yellow, thinking she's all that with her so-called good hair, said one. Far as I'm concerned, she ain't nothing, said another. Less than nothing, said a third. I shook off the memory. Look, Mom, I said, you don't understand. But she wasn't listening. Most girls, you know, would kill to have your hair, she said. That's just it, Mom. They hate me for it, and they hate my skin. I can't do anything about my skin, okay? But my hair I can fix. I lost the argument, of course. Then three weeks later, I cut it anyway. It's growing back now, and I've decided to let it. I mean, it's not like I can win, you know? I've tried dressing down in t-shirts and baggy pants with no makeup, and it's still either, come here, pretty mama, from cocky boys like Wesley, who I have absolutely no use for, or getting grief from girls I used to want as friends. I even thought about getting brown contact lenses once to cover up my green eyes, but my friend Sterling talked me out of it. He's light-skinned, too, so he knows where I'm coming from. He said he used to twist himself into a pretzel over it until he realized God loves him just the way he is. Besides, he told me, if I did start wearing colored contacts, those girls would only say I was trying to be something I'm not, and he's right. So I give up. Let them say what they want. I am not a skin color or a hunk of, hank of wavy hair. I am a person, and if they don't get it, that's their problem, not mine. I'm better off with friends like Deandra and Janelle, who know I'm more than what I look like. They know I've got a brain, and I know how to use it. They're no dummies, either. That's why I asked Mr. Ward if the three of us could do a group project on women of the Harlem Renaissance for extra credit. We had our first meeting at my house. Can we do Zora and Neil Hurston? asked Janelle. I know we read their eyes were watching God in class, but she wrote a bunch of other stuff too. You're right, I said. Good idea. I picked up my pad and wrote Z Hurston at the top. Okay, that's a good start, but I think we should cover some women you don't hear so much about. Like Georgia Douglas Johnson. I read some of her work in a book called 3,000 Years of Black Poetry. I'd never heard of her before, and I bet nobody else in class has either. Cool, said DeAndre. Maybe I should read that book and see if I can get a couple of ideas. You can borrow it from the library, I said. As soon as I return it, that is. We all laughed. I'm notorious for turning library books in late. Meanwhile, DeAndre, 
You can start working on portraits of these sisters so we can use them for our report covers when we're done. I didn't wait for her to volunteer because I knew she wouldn't. For somebody who has talent, she sure spends an awful lot of energy hiding it. But I figure if enough people tell her she's good, she'll start believing it. That means people I actually have to see her work. I'm going to make sure they do, even if I have to keep volunteering her for projects till we graduate. She's not about to say no to me. She knows I'm stubborn when I want something. Fine, says Deandra. I'll do the portraits, but don't look at me when Mr. Ward sees those report covers and bust out laughing. Laughing? What do you mean laughing? Janelle and I looked at each other. I nodded, and on the count of three, we jumped on Deandra and tickled her till tears of laughter squirted out of her eyes. Them's my girls. They don't care what I look like. They know the only difference between my color and theirs is that the slave master who owned my family raped my great-grandma great instead of theirs. And like my dad says, that ain't nothing to celebrate or be stuck up about. For the Record by Tanisha Scott It's the blood that tells. Slaves black as Mississippi mud ring the trunk of my family tree. They speak through me black as they want to be. The slaver's white drop couldn't stop the spread of African sails. Their bread in the bone, past the slick hair, the too fair skin. So don't tell me I can't fit in. My heart beats like a talking drum. My mom hums to Bessie just like yours. The brothers in my dreams are pure ebony and blue-black grandmother arms like the ones that cradled my ancestors have often cradled me. Tyrone, now I know why the sister hisses every time I call her caramel cutie. That'd be the last thing she wants to hear. She's proud of her African self, and I'm down with that. That's why I be wearing my kufi every chance I get. I wonder if the sister's, sister's into African music. I gotta ask her about that sometimes. Maybe I could hook up some African drum music to go with her poetry for the assembly Teach told us about. She could read her stuff, and I could play DJ. Yeah, I could get into that.